Time to drag the Elk into the 21st century with an SD card interface. Acorn Electron, the unloved member of the BBC Micro family. And if you think things are looking a bit different today, um, this is just a quick video and I thought I'd test out my Google Pixel phone to do a little bit of a quicker video because we're going to talk SD card interfaces for the Elk because basically if you buy one of these and these this one cost me about £15, picked up very cheaply, um, all you've got is cassette software. That's, that's it. Um, the machine only has a cassette interface on it on the side there. Um, it's very simple cut down BBC Micro um, except it's a little bit slower due to the way the memory works. And yeah, so it's either you've got to plug things into the cassette socket in the side to load them in, either from real tapes or, or images. And it can be a little bit fiddly. When I've had to do reviews for Chinivision, it's been quite fiddly to do stuff. Um, but not anymore, because there is now an SD card interface that doesn't require the uh, plus one interface plugged in on the back that you can just buy on eBay. And here it is, is the Acorn Electron SD card interface. And I will just read from the eBay listing. It costs $29.95 delivered. Um, it enables the Acorn Electron to load or run disk images from a standard micro SD memory card, plugs directly into the Electron's expansion port, no extra hardware required, compatible with widely available SSD image files, runs games, application softwares, demos, and it can use any SD card up to eight gigabytes. And it's made in the UK and it loads and saves programs as if it's a real floppy disk and claims to be the most affordable memory card interface for the Acorn Electron. So, what do you get? You get three things in your parcel when it arrives, or I did with this, and I'll explain this later. You get the card, which is that bit there. I'll bring it up for you to see. ROM chip there. You get a cable, which you have to individually plug each bit in. Not a ribbon cable either. A little square cable like that. And you get an SD card reader on the end there. Now, the idea is supposed to be that it's easier for you to get at the SD card when it's plugged into the machine. But really, are you taking this out that often? And indeed, the Mark II of this device, this is the very last Mark I sold, does away with all this cable and the SD card just sits on the top there like that, which seems like a far more sensible arrangement. So if you're buying one of these now, you won't get one of these silly cables with it. Um, you have to supply your own SD card and put your own Beeb MMB file on there, which is not too much of a faff. Um, and then you have to follow the instructions to load games in. And it's a nice clicky one, which you'll know, people know that I get annoyed when it's just ones that don't click because it costs like 1p extra to have one that clicks. Um, it plugs in the back of your Acorn Electron. And the listing does warn you to uh, clean your expansion port. However, mine still has the protector on it. So I've assembled all this, which took me, it took me about five minutes. You've got to make sure all these cables go to the right place. Plug it in both ends. You then plug it in to your night. Well, this is nice and clean. So if you've got a one that's been exposed all these years, you'll need to clean it off. But this one should just go in like that. Two little feet on the back to stop it flapping around in the breeze. And that's, if you can see there, what it looks like all plugged in with this bit flapping around in the breeze. Sorry, this is wobbling, by the way. I bought this stand to do this, and it just kind of, it's a bit crossroads, isn't it? Anyway, and then you've got this flapping around, which, as I say, is ludicrous. But you're not going to have one of these if you buy one of these now because they've sensibly decided to integrate this all into one card, as is right and proper. Let's fire up the Electron and see what happens. So booting up my Elk, 
D-boot zero as per most MMZ cards, loads up the menu, menu to system downloaded from Stardot. Slightly confusing system because you have to control, hold down caps lock in order to access the function keys you need to access the game. So hold down a function key and then one, two, three, four, five, etc. and you get the F keys. Why this couldn't have just been on one, two, three, four, five? I don't know. But you can scroll through and you select which menu you want. So we're going to jump forward here. And you can sort by publisher or by game. It's not particularly quick, but then the ELK isn't particularly fast micro. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much. It's a shame there's not an HXC type interface available for the Electron, really. That would be a big step forward. So you select what game you want. I want to play Kane. And then another menu comes up, so it goes MMC disk menu, and then you have to select Kane, and then you get this MMC read fault bad program. And I've been seeing this a fair bit. Seems to be that style of menu as opposed to another style of menu that causes it to crash. I don't know why. Perhaps the individual SSDs will work fine. Perhaps it's just this compilation. But this is the standard one on Stardot, so. I assume that it's all been fully tested. Um, Stardot people are quite good like that. Let's try another game. So let's go for Loops, one of the later Electron games, and it does the same again. Same menu system. MMC read for, I'm just doing these at random, bad program. And I have had games working this morning. So you know what? I don't know. I'm just, just bad luck. I'm just showing this as it happens. Right, let's try again. Let's choose a page at random. Oh, it's that menu system again. Impossible mission, is it gonna work? Uh-huh. Black screen, there we go, right, another menu. Possible mission, written by Peter Johnson. Acorn Electron Haven, right. A space, and into the game we go. This one's worked. Okay, it's not the C64 version, but I've said it before, it's a very impressive port that runs on both the BBC Micro and on the Elk. It all seems to be running fine, so that's fantastic. Most people will just pick up the MMC files available on Stardot because they are the definitive compilations of games. But whether it's this SD card interface or whether it's the images, I, I couldn't say. We know with the CPC, for example, the M4 card doesn't like certain copy protection schemes when you try and download or put games onto your CPC via Wi-Fi and onto your M4 card. Sometimes not all games work that would work on an HXC card. We might be looking at a similar situation on this, and the CPC community has been really good at fixing those problems. So again, potentially, perhaps the Acorn community would do that here. Why are the exploding fist? Oh, look at that lovely loading screen. Briefly see it, because it's loading so fast, but look at all those colours you could see. And remember, if, if a game looks like this, it doesn't mean it's crashed on an elk. It just means it's overwriting screen memory. And where the exploding fist is absolutely fine. Arcadians, next game I've tested, appears to be absolutely fine as well. There's no rhyme nor reason as to the ones that fail, other than that menu that you see, some, the blue menu seems to be more the one that causes it to or, uh, crash when you select a game. So... It could be whoever put those compilations together has done something. It just doesn't like the MMC card. Nice Galaxians clone by Superior Software. Silky smooth. And remember, there's no hardware sprites on this machine either. Thrust also loads. Absolutely fine. 
lovely port here on the Elk. Oh, and I'm dead. Loads up Jet Set Willy. A time soft conversion. And not like the disastrous conversion they did in the Atari 8 bit. And it's it's fine. It's great. Blue menu for Chucky Egg and Reed Fault again. And that's just a selection of games that I tried. As you can see, it's a little bit hit and miss. So that's a look at the Acorn Electron SD interface by GC. And uh, this is version 1A, but it's version 2 available as of now. And it's a pretty impressive device. It's very affordable, £30. It arrives quickly. Uh, this whole problem has been solved. So you don't have all this stuff waving around bits to lose. Because when you put this in your cupboard with bits, you want one card that you can put into a box, not have something attached to it. Because not all of us have all our missions out all of the time, especially our elk, because I've got my master out. My master is the size of Spain, as all BBC masters are, apart from the compact. So, you know, you don't, you want it to be all kind of, be able to put it away afterwards. The problem is, as I've seen, that some games don't load. I need to spend more time with the device, to be honest, because we all know with SD card interfaces, you can get bad images and so on. And there may have been things I've done wrong. I've just load, downloaded the standard Beeb file from Stardot. And some of the biggest games don't seem to load. Chucky Egg, Repton, uh, any of the Repton games I tried, in fact, seem to hang. But when the device did work, it worked pretty well. I'm, I'm sure it's not the fault of the device. It's probably the disk images or the way that, far, uh, that compilation has been compiled. Nevertheless, you may find it disappointing if you can't get your favourite game working. That said, you haven't got many options as a BBC Electron, BBC Electron, Acorn Electron owner. So to have most of your software loading seamlessly seems like a good bet to me. But as I say, you may have to try different disk images and I will report back if I continue to have problems with this. But for me, this is a big step forward for Acorn Electron owners because now you've got instant loading even if it doesn't seem to be 100% successful all of the time at least with the images I tried. <laughs> <laughs>